We're going to be making a beautiful convertible lariat necklace using copper colored check glass beads. If you're interested, stick around. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying warmer temperatures. I guess it depends on what part of the world you're from. But here in the US, we're having wonderful temperatures. And of course, I'm enjoying the gorgeous blossoms everywhere. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I do unboxings, I do reviews, and I do jewelry tutorials. So if you think that's something you might be interested in, please think about subscribing to my channel. And we have a very nice tutorial today. I can't wait to show you. But before we begin, I want to thank everybody who left comments about my cat Boo Boo. Let me give you a little update. He's actually doing really well and I'm pretty sure it's because of all your prayers and all your well wishes. I'm so grateful and so humbled. But anyway, he's doing much better. He's eating on his own so we don't have to give him any appetite stimulant. He enjoys being outside and when he's outside, he's usually on my lap or walking around. And of course, he loves to hang around my other cat Lulu. Here he is grooming her. She doesn't always like it and sometimes she'll lash out at him, but most of the time she doesn't. But anyway, we're still giving him IV fluids and I think that's really helping a lot. And so we're just taking it one day at a time. I will say though that I'm devoting a lot of my time to being with him. So it has set me back a little bit, but I really don't mind because I'll do anything for that cat. So anyway guys, I'm very excited because we're going to be making that gorgeous lariat necklace that you saw in the introduction. And we're going to be using the beads that came in Sam's Speedbox for the month of March. Now, if you're not familiar with Sam's Speedbox, I'll leave a link down below to the website so you can go check it out. I'll also leave a little bit of information down below in the description section of this video. And if you're one of the lucky ones who has that box, you're in the right place because it's going to be super easy for you to make that necklace. And if you don't have that box, you can still make that necklace. You're just going to have to find similar beads. I'm going to be showing you a couple of tips. So if you're a beginner, stick around. And don't forget that I always model my necklaces, so please stick around till the end. And as always, I'll leave some timestamps down below in case you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. And I'll also leave a list of all the materials that we're going to be using today. So without any further ado, let's go ahead, turn the camera around and we'll get started. And here we have Sam's Speed Box for the month of March 2023. The name of this box is Beauty of Time. Obviously, we're not going to be doing an unboxing today. I already did one a couple of weeks ago. And if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it down below in the description section of this video. But the entire box was absolutely gorgeous. It was filled with all kinds of copper colored beads, brown Picasso finishes and mint colors. I was so impressed with the entire collection. And if I could, if I had time, I would try to make something with all the beads in this box. But unfortunately, my time is kind of limited, but we are going to be making a very nice piece today. So let's go over the materials. And here are the beads we're going to be using. As you can see, I decided to use a monochromatic scheme today. So I pretty much selected all of the beads that had copper from the box. These have a Picasso finish that's kind of greenish toned. So I guess it's not exactly monochromatic. I just thought these were so gorgeous and I couldn't resist them. They're Czech glass starburst coin beads. And the color is rustic Picasso with a copper wash. And these measure 18 millimeters in size. And these came on a strand. They're Czech glass petal leaf beads and the color is copper and crystal, and they measure nine by 12 millimeters in size. They also came with those little beads. I think those beads are four millimeters in size, and I am gonna use a few of them. And here we have some faceted rounds. They're also check glass beads. Sam Speed Box pretty much comes with just check glass beads. I think the only other beads in the Sam Speed Box that aren't check glass are the gemstones. But anyway, all of these are check glass beads, and these measure eight millimeters in size. The color is copper and crystal. And here we have some check glass heart leaf beads. The color is clear crystal with a copper wash and these measure 9 by 11 millimeters. Now in addition to these beads, we're going to be using some other items that are not in the box. We're going to be using a hook from a hook and eye clasp set. And as you can see, we're just using the hook. We're not using the ring part. I got these on Amazon. They come in different colors, but you can find them on Etsy as well or places like Fire and Mountain Gem. They're not that difficult to find. And here I have a ball head pin. It's in a copper color as you can see. 
I have three jump rings here. These measure 8.5 millimeters and the color of these is rose gold. And the reason I chose rose gold is because I'm going to be loading them with some seed beads that are copper colored and I wanted the jump rings to be a little bit lighter than the seed beads. I did try using copper colored jump rings and that looked okay but I prefer this lighter color. But you can use any color you want as long as it's rose gold or copper. I'm going to be using some size 80 seed beads and we're not going to need very many. We're going to load six seed beads onto each one of these jump rings. So you'll need a total of 18 and these are Toho round beads and if you're interested in this color you can find it on Etsy. The code is YPS0019. If you put that into the search engine you should be able to find it but I'll leave all of this information down below in the materials list. And we're also going to be using some 20 gauge wire and this is by Beadsmith but I'm not particular about the brand and it's in an antique copper color. Let's go ahead and get started by loading the seed beads onto these jump rings. Let me open it up. The easiest way to load them is by using pliers and these are needle nose pliers by Zeron. And you simply pick them up like this and then slide them onto the jump ring. And these seed beads have very uniform holes, which makes it really easy. So that's five. Let me slide them down a little bit more. It's a little tricky because you don't want to drop them. And I just dropped that one seed bead. So let me try again. There we go. As you can see, I've loaded all six. And now we're simply going to close it. And that's all there is to it. So let me go ahead and do the other two off camera and I'll be right back. I'm back and as you can see, I've loaded all three jump rings. Now these jump rings are not going to be just decorative. They're actually going to be functional and I think most of you probably know what I'm going to be using them for. If you watched the intro at the beginning of this video, you would have seen that I used them to connect the hook to. And the reason I have three is because I want my necklace to be convertible so that I can change it up a little bit and wear it in different ways. And I'll show you at the end of this video all the different options. So let's move on to the next step. We're going to load one of these leaf beads onto the ball head pin. And I'm going to go in from the tip of the leaf like this. And now using some round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the pin right at the top of the bead like this. Kink it like this. Switch to this part of the pin. Take the tail, wrap it around the nose of the pliers. Flip the pliers around. Continue to wrap that tail to the back. Like this. And now I'm going to grab the loop with these pliers. These are actually crimping pliers, but I like to use the tip because they grab really well. And they're nice and skinny. And now with another set of pliers, I'm going to grab the tail and I'm going to do a few wraps. I usually do about two, two and a half, something like that. But you can do as many as you want to. And now using some flush cutters, I'm going to cut off the excess pin. And you definitely want to tuck in any little sharp end that's sticking out. And this is what you should have. And that's the only bead that's going to be on a ball head pin. All the other beads are going to be on 20 gauge wire. So let's put this one over here. Since this tutorial is so easy, I'm going to try to squeeze in a couple of tips for the beginners. I know I've gone over this before, but we're going to be doing some simple loops today. And if you're a beginner, you may be struggling with that. There's a couple of things you can do. One of the things I recommend you do is that you mark your pliers. And I've already marked one of my barrels, as you can see. Let me go ahead and do the other one. I'm just going to use a Sharpie.
You want to make sure you mark both barrels. Just like that. Now my loops are going to be a pretty nice size today. They're not going to be small loops. And one of the things that you may struggle with when you're a beginner is making sure that your loops are all uniform in size. So I have another tip for that and I'll show you in just a few moments. We're going to go ahead and get started. And today I'm going to be using my wire saving method. So I have a long piece of wire. This is 20 gauge wire. You can work directly off the spool if you want to, but I'm using a piece of wire because it's more convenient for me to film. And that way I can stay within the frame of the camera. So let me show you how we're going to do this. The first thing I need to do is kink that wire and I'm going to kink it at half an inch down. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's what I need for the size loop that I want. And it's all based on where you put your mark. And you can figure it out very easily. I like to use aluminum wire for this. And the reason I like to use it is because it's soft. So I'm going to cut myself a small piece. So now I'm going to use my marked pliers and I'm going to place the wire right where the markings are. And by the way, you can use any type of wire. It doesn't have to be aluminum. I just like using it because it's soft and I'll show you why in a few moments. So I'm going to place it right there, making sure that it's flush and I'm simply going to turn my wrist to form a loop. Just like that. And I know it's in the shape of a P. When you actually do your loops, they should sit straight on your pin. But I'm not concerned about that because right now we're trying to figure out the circumference of the loop. So I'm going to use my Sharpie again. And I'm going to place a little mark right here. I would have used silver colored aluminum wire, but I didn't have any. Hopefully you can see it. So now I'm going to open up the loop like this very carefully. And this is why I like to use aluminum wire for this. And then using some nylon coated pliers, I'm going to try to straighten it out a little bit the best way I can. just like that. And now it's just a matter of measuring it. And it's about a half an inch. So now that I know the length of it, I'm going to use a guide. And it's a guide that I created with a piece of cardboard. Let me show you. Here it is. This is just a piece of regular cardboard. And it's half an inch wide. And we're going to use this as a guide. So if you're a beginner, this is a really great tip because it's going to help you make uniform loops. So let me show you how to do this. You're going to grab your wire, you're going to take your guide and place it like this. And now I'm going to place my thumbnail right where the edge of that cardboard is, just like that. So now I'm going to grab the wire right where my thumbnail is and kink it. These are flat nose pliers. And I know that that's half an inch because of the guide. And I also know that it's going to work really well with the markings of my pliers. So now I'm going to grab the wire like this, making sure that it's right where the markings are. And you want to make sure it's flush, okay? You don't want anything sticking out because then your loop won't be round. And now you're simply going to turn it like this. You want to make sure you close your loop and then you also want to make sure you straighten it. Just like that. Pretty simple. And now we're going to thread on a bead. Let's thread on one of these like that. And now we're going to use a guide to figure out where to cut the wire. So I'm going to place it right here like this. And now I'm going to snip off my wire. And now I know that when I go to create this loop, it's going to be the same as this one, the same size. So now I'm going to grab the wire with my flat nose pliers, line up the bottom loop, kink it, Get my round nose pliers again with the markings. 
place the end of the wire right where the markings are, make sure it's flush, and create a loop. Make sure it's straight and make sure it's closed. And that's all there is to it, but we do need to straighten out these loops. We want to make sure they're level. So I'm going to grab them with two sets of plies like this. And now we have a beta component with two perfect loops. We also have this wire left over, which we're going to use to create the next component. And we haven't wasted any wire at all. And like I said, if you're doing this at home, you can work directly from the spool. So I'm going to do all of my components the exact same way, but I do want to show you this one here because this one's a little bit different. This bead is actually drilled across the top. So let me show you how I do this one. Once again, I'm going to take my guide, place it on my wire like this, place my thumbnail at the edge of the cardboard like that, kink it right where my thumbnail is, grab the wire, form a loop, make sure it's straight and make sure it's closed like this. And now I'm going to thread the bead on just like that. So now we're going to do the other side and I'm going to use my guide. I'm going to place it right here, cut off the excess wire, and I'm going to turn the bead this way because it's going to be easier for me to form that loop. I'm going to grab the wire like this, line up the bottom loop, kink it, place the end of the wire in my pliers, and form a loop. Make sure it's nice and closed. And now I do want to straighten out my loops. And this one's done. And we have this much wire left. So I'll need to cut myself another piece and that's enough for another bead. I'm going to do the rest off camera to save time and I'll probably be working right from the spool. And you have the privilege of seeing how many components I'm going to make. So I'm going to show you in a few moments when I come back. But I'm thinking for planning purposes, I think I'm going to create between 10 and 12 of the faceted rounds. Six of the petal leaves, six of the heart leaves. And obviously we're just going to have five of these. And I'll use some of the little ones as well, probably about four of them. I don't want to have too many because they're kind of small. They're just going to add a little bit of variety and something different. I want the necklace to feel kind of organic. So it's nice to have different sizes and different shapes. So let me go ahead and create them off camera and I'll be right back. I thought I would insert this tip for those of you who are working off the spool. So this is what you would do. You would go ahead and thread your bead on before you kink the wire, just like that. And if you're a beginner and you're working with a guide, you can place it at the end like this, just like I showed you earlier. I have my thumbnail right there so I know where to kink it. Go ahead and kink it. Place your round nose pliers at the end. Form a loop. Make sure it's straight and make sure it's closed. And now I'm going to slide the bead down. Take the guide, place it right up against the bead. Cut the wire. And that's all there is to it. And then you would go ahead and form your loop, just like I showed you earlier. Well, I'm back and as you can see, I mounted all the beads on wire. And one thing I forgot to mention, when you're working with 20 gauge wire, you want to make sure that it's nice and straight so that it fits through the holes. Some of these holes were a little bit small, so if you have any amount of curve or if you have a kink on your wire, it may not fit through very well. So it's important that you straighten out your wire with some nylon coated pliers. 
Now, if you're a beginner, hopefully you found this tip to be useful. It's a great way to get started. Later on with practice, you won't need these at all. You'll be able to figure out exactly where you need to be on that plier, so you won't even need a guide because you'll be able to eyeball exactly where to kink the wire for your loops. So now what I'm going to do is arrange these the way I think they should go. It's going to be very random, but I'm going to try to distribute the components so that everything looks balanced. And to save time, I'm going to do it off camera and I'll be right back. As you can see, I've arranged the components the way I want them. The nice thing about simple loops is that you can open them up and swap the components around if you need to. Once I connect everything, I'll take a look and see if I need to make any changes. And by the way, I only have 11 of the 8mm faceted rounds, these ones here. Don't ask me why it's such an odd number. I can always make more of any of these components if I need more. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and connect them. And that's very easy to do. I'm going to take this component here, open up the loop like this. Take this one here with a ball head pin, close up my loop, and now I'm going to open up this loop here, connect the next one, close up the loop, and that's all there is to it. Now the jump ring, you do want to make sure you have three seed beads on one side of the beaded component and three seed beads on the other. Let me show you. I'm going to open up this component. And now I want to make sure that I have three on one side and three on the other. Just like that. Let me close it up. That's what it looks like. So I'm just going to keep connecting all of these beta components and I'll see you in a few moments. Okay, I'm back and I've connected everything as you can see. I did want to show you how to connect this hook. It's very simple. I'm just going to open up this loop and slide it right in. That's all there is to it. So now I'm going to take this to the mirror and check the length and everything and I'll be right back. As you can see, I've connected everything and I thought I would go over the measurements with you. This whole necklace measures 23 and a half inches long and that's not counting the pendant. And the pendant would be this portion right here from the jump ring to the leaf. The starburst coin beads are spaced two and three quarter inches apart from each other. And I have three on one side and two on the other. This section here is the part that goes behind your neck. So I had to take that into account. Of course, ultimately it's up to you how you want to space out your coin beads. That's the nice thing about this design. You can customize it to suit yourself. And as far as the jump rings go, I space them out two and a half inches away from each other and that's pretty much the technical side of it. All the other beads were placed randomly but I did try to keep it balanced. Let me do up the clasp and arrange it differently now. Now it's pretty symmetrical because it's hooked up to this jump ring but once I hook it up to this jump ring or that jump ring it'll be asymmetrical which is fine that's just another look. I like the look of randomly placed beads but I also like it to be balanced. And I know you can't see the whole thing so let me pan down. There's the bottom. It just has the little leaf bead at the bottom. So anyway, I love this necklace because like I said before, it's convertible. You can hook it up to this jump ring for a Y necklace design, or you could hook it up to that jump ring and it's gonna change the look completely. And I'm gonna show you all three ways because I would like to model this for you. So let me go ahead and put it on and I'll be right back.
Well, what do you think? Which way would you wear it? I would love to know. So if you could leave some comments down below, I'd really appreciate it. I personally don't have a favorite. I think I would wear it all four ways. It's nice to have options. That's one of the reasons I love making convertible necklaces. And this one's very easy to put on because of the hook clasp. That's one of the things that I love about it. But of course, what I love the most about it and what makes this necklace are the gorgeous beads that came in Sam's bead box. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope I've inspired you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.